Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Above Life Channel. The purpose here is to inspire your spirit and to fill you with hope today. We're going to have a conversation with Kelly Preston, also known as Kelly Preston Travolta. Yes, John Travolta's wife. Um, Kelly died a few years ago of uh, breast cancer. Now, I'm not sure if it was in 2020 that she died or 2019, but I know that she died of breast cancer and that preceding her in death was her son, Jet. Now, the Travoltas had a son that actually had um, autism, a form of autism, and he died back in uh, 2019 or um, 2009 and um, based on an accident, I guess, is what had happened. So I feel his energy with her. So I wanna say that because as a mom, I instantly feel that they are together and there's just this incredible love and light. And she says, he is the light of my life. Like he is literally the light. He's the light of everyone. And so, um, so to inspire my spirit today, I was wearing my Mickey Mouse shirt and I thought, oh, maybe I'll, you know, zip up my hoodie or, or, or change shirts and things so that I could be a little professional for you guys, a little more professional. And she was like, no, 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 by all means, channel like this, channel like this, let's talk like this, let's talk like this, she says, because Jet was a huge fan of Disneyland in California specifically. So hello all right so that's great so we'll do that we'll honor him by wearing this so kelly i would love to um chat with you and get to know you but i really don't know that much about you except that you're married to a very famous man a very long marriage too like 30 years or something like that 25 years a long time yes she said yes so can you tell us the secret to a good marriage? Let's ask her that. <laughs> she says, oh, I don't know if I, uh, if I, I have any, anything special or any special advice that I could give to anyone. I think the most important thing, she says, is the most important thing is to treat each other kindly and be respectful. And she says, recognize the boundaries in the relationship. It, like your space is your space, my space is my space. That's what she's kind of giving me the vibes for. Mm. So uh, would you say you have an independent nature or maybe your spouse, your, you know, John had an independent nature. That's the reason why you're saying boundaries, respect to the boundaries in the relationship. Well, I think it's true. She says, I think it's true for any, any relationship. I'm getting the feeling like we're interviewing like on a PM magazine or something like that. Like I'm interviewing on TV and I'd really want to get to know you as a person, as a human being, like uh, feeling of, of your insights reflecting back from now as an afterlife spirit onto your, your human life. But I, I'm willing to go along with this energy that I can feel here um, and see where it goes. But I, my intention is to open up and be really heart based. And she says, um, we can do that, we can do that. And she says, um, as long as you respect uh, my privacy. I'm like, okay, so, but you're an afterlife spirit, so you're not like a human that's attached to um, concerns about judgment or criticism or um, that kind of a thing, so you don't have that. So, so where is that kind of coming from? She says it's connected to the expectation, what people will expect of me or from me in regards to the relationship with my very famous husband, she says. He is not a, as complicated as people would want to believe him to be. He is very much a nurturing, loving human being he has incredible ideas. He's very creative. He's very savvy. Um, he, he likes to be um, on the cutting edge or be innovative and, and, and just very forward looking, very forward looking. And she says, and at times taking risks, um, 
what I might f- deem or you might deem as un, um, unnecessary or, or too, too um, unpredictable. Hmm. So that's the vibe. She says, well, because you wouldn't talk to me unless I had a famous husband. That wouldn't be in my own right. I'm not a, a iconic figure like John is. She's absolutely right, you all that are watching, everyone that's watching, you're at, she's absolutely right, that's absolutely accurate. Yes, I'm curious about him and your family and the dynamics of your family. And yet I don't wanna pry or be rude or get into your private business. But at the same time, I think people are really curious about when someone becomes and when you're part of such a famous family and so well known and so, just has so much influence and access to, to things. I think the rest of us are curious about that because we don't know what that's like. We have no idea what that's like and we can only imagine what it might be. And we can only go on what we're told um, from the media and, and that's just a sliver of, of what, what the reality is, which we well know and, and the viewers at Above Life Channel are very respectful of that. For the most part, we're very respectful. Let's talk about your charities and things and and what you would like to see for your legacy. And I know you died of breast cancer. She said, yes. She said it metastasized rather quickly and she's showing me that it's in her family. And she says um, there were complications, things that were unforeseen that sped things up um did you not get did you not get it caught soon enough she's talking to me about the timeline that it wasn't it's almost like okay so so how she's having me i'm feeling this and how she's making me feel about this energetically is that it's something that wasn't unforeseen like it maybe happened in the family or maybe she had a scare earlier on and so she would be wise to this or know of it, but at the time that it was discovered, it, it progressed rapidly, very quickly. She's also making me feel that she really doesn't want any toxins or lasers, like she's saying lasers for some reason. I don't know why, what the laser reference is. It could be like a, a type of surgery. It could be a, a test, a screening but I don't want any type of lasers. She doesn't want anything unnatural like that, that unnatural vibration to be in her body. Like she doesn't want, I don't know if she didn't have chemo or radiation, but she does not want any of that. She does not like any of that. She doesn't want any of that. And she's making me feel like her daughter was very upset with her or angry with her. And in private, maybe not public, but in private, and, and she says, of course, you know, there's a grief and grief is completely unpredictable and, and, it's, and it's something that you can't tell someone else how to feel or act or receive information, you know, the news. And she's very angry with me. And although that is something that we had been able to work through it felt uh, almost like a she's making me feel like there's a little bit of a betrayal almost like um, betraying myself is what kelly's making me feel betraying myself so interesting so do you regret not getting um not finding the cancer earlier or not getting the kinds of treatments that maybe could have saved your life because that's kind of the question i feel but it also feels like you guys so genetically i can see markers like um energetically i'm not a medical medium i'm not i'm not a medical psychic i don't know anything about like i always tell people like kelly you're gonna kick out of this i always tell people that um I barely, I think I got a D in biology. I might have just dropped it because I didn't want to, I did so bad, poorly in it when I was in my first semester of college. Of course, I was like 18 years old and no concept of science, any of that stuff was not my thing. Um, so I'm not medical at all in any way, shape or form, but 
you're you're I'm literally seeing like the sequencing sequencing where you could be predisposed to have cancer of this sort because breast cancer is something that's pretty um, if, if you can find it early enough it's pretty livable you know it's pretty it's something that can 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 often be treated and managed um, but in some cases it's, it can't be so like she's making me feel like there's a little bit of a betrayal like she betrayed herself a bit and and it feels like it has to do with timing. That's interesting. So, and then she's making me feel like she missed a milestone, like uh, a major anniversary, a major birthday. She missed something at her death, her passing. She missed something. She missed out on something. And she's, she's sad about that. It feels like it was maybe even in August. It feels like an A month. It might be August. In fact, I was thinking about how oftentimes I will feel inspired to channel people because there's a timing thing. Something time related, calendar related month that could be a birthday, an anniversary, a death date, some important event, significant event in their lives like they got an award on that day or in that month or um, released an album in that month, etc. And with you I'm not sure what the significance of March or April would be. Um, it feels more like April because by the time I share this video, it will be April because we're right at the end of March right now when I'm recording it for, for the viewers. Um, so legacy, can we talk about that a little bit? She's like my children. My children are the greatest gift that, that I had been given and my family meant an incredible, a, a great, great deal to me. You guys, I'm kind of getting this little bit of a vibe that there's a little bit of a energy around her that's super purist where like um there's chemicals in the water we can't have this kind of water there's i can't have i can't have a scan because that would be um uh, introducing something unhealthy to my body um like an ultrasound or something like i can't do that or if i do it, it has to be the only way and like very much almost like this not i don't want to say paranoia that's not the right word it's more like a hyper concern let's say that hyper concern because paranormal is a little more like I'm going into the crazy place. Um, hyper concerned about things being put into the body, toxins, chemicals, the environment, um, the land, the air, all this stuff that um, feels really like the need to be pure. There's this really strong desire for her to be pure. I'm almost feeling like there's a little bit of a Almost like oh, everything should be so pure that we're gonna separate or exclude ourselves from others, line, other lines of thinking and could potentially fall into like a conspiracy theory kind of a energy. I'm just gonna say that because that's what it feels like. Honestly, that's what it feels like. Um, I'm not projecting that onto you. I'm kind of feeling that like, mm, this, isn't, this is a little different than just being healthy. <laughs> There's a little more extremism in the energy of the heightened concern, let's say that. So I'm feeling that I'm not sure what that's about. And I want to be respectful, of course. Um, so as an afterlife spirit, do you have anything you could say about that? She says, it can be a dangerous thing to be so almost ingrown, like in, in your own um, yeah, she's almost making me feel like so isolated kind of, but not isolated. Like she didn't feel lonely or that kind of thing. She's, she wants to clear that up, by the way, that she didn't feel lonely. And then there was, um, did you have an open marriage? Do you mind if I ask you that? Did you have an open marriage? Because I see other relationships. She's very much like, as a human, she would not talk about that, but as a higher evolved spirit in the afterlife, I think everyone, she says, everyone deserves love and to be loved and everyone wants to have that sort of physical intimacy that is part of a relationship. And that's something while John and I loved each other very, very much, we didn't have it in a consistent or traditional sense. Okay. And there's almost this feeling of like, righteous kind of like our way this is our way and that 
there's this collective thinking that they have with some other people that are like-minded. I wonder if they're in like a Scientology thing or something different. I don't think they're in Scientology, but it almost feels like this mindset, this pattern of thought around relationships and the health and your body and the environment and, and what's okay and what's not okay and like passive. Um, it almost feels almost like a little bit of a spiritual connection too. Like there's this almost righteousness about not in judgment necessarily of others, but in judgment of uh, the ability to control their own space in a way that feels like, and righteous is the only word that's coming through because it almost feels like the spiritual awareness of, of what they believe to be they, their family, their little unit, to be true as far as like there's a huge focus on health like what's healthy for me and the sustainability or livability and long-term livability and it's almost like with her death they're free as individuals to have their own relationships to john can can move on she can move on and their family unit, this concept of family can still stay intact. I don't see him getting remarried unless he's really, really lonely. He likes to have the companionship of somebody always there, but it's not the same way as like a husband, wife kind of companionship or, or other, let's just say that because there's been a speculation about, about, um, about preferences and things. Let's say it that way. I'm not sure how YouTube would take it if I point blank just said, but. I think you're interesting because you're confusing to me a little bit, Kelly, when I'm feeling into you because I kind of, I want to be, I'm used to like connecting with somebody and having it be like this big, like charity or this big, like empowered kind of, kind of force. And, and I'm trying to, I'm struggling right now a bit to find out what it is, the purpose for you and I to talk. Like, why is it? Besides obviously being married to John Travolta that... What is the, the purpose? And then she says, a better understanding. You want to, to know what it's like for those that you're not like. Famous people, people who are in the public eye, it's it's not an easy life, as you've you've mentioned many times before, and you've 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 really respected that, and and I, she says, I very much appreciate that, and but there's more, she says, there's more. Like to me, my entire purpose were were my children, family, and being a mother was the most important thing for me and she says like she touches her heart and she says for me and my children my children like you ask about my legacy or what i leave behind or how i want to be remembered and it's with my children my kids and that's something that's really difficult growing up in the public eye and being in your own little bubble and while it can feel real safe when they're little and they're young and you can just keep everything contained and sooner or later they need to go out into the world and have their own experiences and have relationships and understand, you know, have heartaches and, and, and have, have experiences that you just can't protect them from. And as difficult as that is, she's like showing me heartache, heartache. As difficult as that is, the, the lies and the rumors and the, the stories, the expose, exposés, the exposure of the parents. When you have famous parents, it's something that I, she's like saying, it's not like she didn't think about it, but she didn't realize how little of an impact she could have keeping them away from the rest of the world so to speak, to be like a regular or normal family. Like she's showing me striving, constantly striving to be a regular family, a regular family, but with all the benefits, with all the benefits that, that money does bring. And she's saying money does bring 
a great deal of, of benefits, of luxury, of, of, of experiences that other people are just not able to do. So that's how much is that a regular family, the part that's normal, the, normally, the normalcy, she says, is the time together, you know, the time at the dinner table, the time playing games, the time watching movies and cuddled up on the couch and eating popcorn. And she says, those normal moments are, are so cherished, she says, so cherished. And, and that's the point. It feels like that's the point. The normal things in life that we even now, especially now after this crazy year that we've had, being isolated, separated from, from many, many people has been, um, some of those mundane things are getting like monotonous and crazy and like all we want is to be out and be with other people, maybe. Let's just say that with a grain of salt for me. It's a grain of salt. That's a mixed bag for me personally. <laughs> I'm like, I'm good being here. I'm good with that. And um, but she's saying it's those moments that we can't that that are the most precious, the most important. Those are treasures. You know, those are the those are the things that really matter most. She says to me, and being a mother was the most important thing for her most important experience, most her kids are her legacy is what she's telling me. So she wants to be remembered as a mom. That's how she wants to remember, not even as an actress, not as John Travolta's wife, not as a woman who died of breast cancer. She wants to be remembered as a mother. So for all the mothers out there, do you have um, words of wisdom for the mothers out there? She says, absolutely, you're gonna make mistakes. You are gonna make mistakes. You're going to make decisions and choices and you're going to react to things and you're going to wish you'd done things differently and had those conversations differently. And that's because you're human and you will make mistakes. The, the most important thing is to learn from that and to try not to be so hard on yourself. I think as, as women as a whole, we are very much under the spotlight, in a, under a microscope, in the spotlight, and there's a lot of pressures that are that are 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 aimed right at us. And stepping into the role of uh, motherhood is not an easy task, and many of us are just thrust into it. and And I can see how that would be something very um, unnerving, unsettling. You never really feel like you're doing everything right or correct, but as long as your heart is good, if your heart is good, she talks, she touches her heart a lot, you guys, in this conversation. As long as your heart is good, then you are gonna have to trust that you'll be guided by your heart. She's like, by the heart, by the heart. So that's what I would, that's the advice. Well, that's really sweet, actually. It makes me feel a little emotional. Oh, it's really sweet. All right, Kelly Preston and your son, Jet. Hey, nice to see you as well, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know, Mickey Mouse, right? Right, your mom said you like Mickey Mouse. Pirates of the Caribbean, it looks like he likes that. He kind of, he's moving a little bit, so I don't know if he likes motion or what. He's like kind of rocking back and forth. And it is nice to meet you. Yeah, nice to meet you. And they're both showing up in the essence of they're very closely connected to their previous life as Kelly and Jet. So I'm trying to, as you've seen throughout the course of this, this particular channeling session, I'm trying to access that higher evolved wisdom, but there's very much this identification with this lifetime, which, which can be different with different spirits. As you've seen here on Above Life Channel, channeling sessions can be different. So. It doesn't, it's not good or bad, it's just different to you guys. It's just different. Different is just different. It doesn't mean it's good, it doesn't mean it's bad. It's not to be judged, it's just different. So thank you, thank you for coming today. Thank you for being here. All right. So I hope we've inspired your spirit today and filled you with some hope. Remember, this is your life. It's your life after all. It's your life above, above life channel viewers. This is your life now. So you need to live it, just to live it. Thanks for watching.